Hello everybody, my name is Gabe and this is episode 1 to my Unity C Sharp programming tutorial series. So uh, in this episode we're going to be going over how to uh, do some basic things in C Sharp. I don't think we're going to get to doing anything in the actual engine yet, um, like uh, game stuff. We're just going to be going over how to actually program uh, C Sharp. So I'm going to start off now, we're going to get straight into this. Make a new folder in here called scripts. And inside scripts, I'm just going to place a new C Sharp script. I'm just going to call it Hello World. Okay, so just open that up in Visual Studio. All right, so after Visual Studio has opened, um, with your Hello World.cs script, it should look something like this, but the overlay, or I don't really know what it's called, the uh, theme might not look exactly the same. So. I'm going to include mine in the description and you can go to tools and then import and export settings, import selected environment setting, and then uh, include the uh, file that I will give you. So then yours should look like mine if you so choose to uh, do that. So now we're going to be going over what all of this stuff means and uh, hopefully by the end of this tutorial uh, you'll be able to understand some basic things about C Sharp. So I'm going to remove this because we're not going to go into that yet. Um, we're going to start off by doing a few simple things. So in C Sharp, we have something here called using. Um, it says using and then some name. This one says Unity Engine and everything ends in a semicolon. So we're using the Unity Engine API, which means that we can do things like uh, change, like uh, do things in Unity like uh, make a player move, uh, things like that, like uh, anything in the engine. And then system.collections is another um, package, if you if you will. Everything is stored in a class. Um, this is a public class, which means that it can be accessed by other scripts. Uh, class, which, so it's a public class. This is the name of it, which has to be the same thing as the, as the name of the script. This means type. And this is a type of mono behavior, which is, uh, we'll go into what that means later. And then we have brackets. And brackets are, do things like um, finish statements, I guess. So what you saw earlier, you saw two things. You saw void start and you saw void update. And these are called methods. Uh, so void start does things on the first frame of the game. And void update does things once per frame for the whole uh, time the game is running or the script is being ran. So that's what that means. Void, just uh, method. Uh, you have the name of it and parameters. You can make your own like, and call it whatever you want, but we'll be going into that later. Right now we're just going to use start. Uh, in Unity, we have a console uh, right here, which... Uh, clear clears it uh, collapse um, I'll show you what that does in a second clear on play will clear it when you hit play and error pause whenever we get an error it'll pause the game so we don't have um, so it doesn't freeze which is very annoying uh, okay so we're gonna start off by printing some things into the console so to print things into the console we type in debug and then now we have this uh, we have this highlighted text called debug and then we have to access that uh, class if you will uh, debug dot log so we're gonna log so we're gonna log something to debug and then we open parameters and semicolon so anything in here is going to be logged and in here we're gonna put in strings hello world and save it uh, what uh, did I say strings I meant quotes anything in quotes is a string and we'll be going over data types later so you'll understand what that means in a second and we finish it off with a semicolon so now if we put this script I'll just make an empty game object this doesn't really matter too much and I will take the script and put it here when we start it says hello world in the console so if we put this in update I'll show you update We're getting it 100 times, 200 times. That's because it does it once per frame, as you can see. Okay, so I'm going to change this back to start. 
and we're going to be going over what uh, data types we can use. So uh, there's a couple data types. We have integers, which store so so the, blah. So this is how we do data types. You put the type of the data type, like what type it is, or what data type my int, which is the name of it, what it equals to. So integers can store uh, numbers that are not decimals from, it's a pretty big range of numbers. Uh, so I'm just gonna put two and then semicolon. Now we have an integer, my int two. Uh, we also have floats. So my float is equal to two. Uh, we could we could do that as well. We could do two, three, uh, but we can also do decimals with this one. So if I do 3.4, it's gonna give us an error because with floats, we have to put F at the end. I don't really know why. I think that's because we also have doubles. So I'm gonna put my double. If I make this 4.5, we don't need to put that F at the end. Uh, I guess that's how C-sharp knows the difference. Uh, we, all, we have a lot of um, things like shorts. My short is equal to three, which is a smaller range. So if you're going for like, if you're trying to do some optimization and you don't need such a big number, I think it's like in the millions or something, I'm not really sure, maybe perhaps billions, um, you would use shorts. We also have longs. Uh, I think you can you can do like crazy long numbers. Uh, yeah, that looks all about right. Uh, we also have strings. So my string is equal to, and this one's a little different because we could use quotes, uh, double quotes, we could use single quotes. Um, but we're still going to need that um, and uh, that semicolon. So I'm going to type in here, hello world. You can also put this, I think, if you want in, in parameters. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you can. We're not going to do that. It just looks uh, a little cleaner this way. Um, and we have one more thing that I'm just going to go over is booleans. Booleans, so my bool is equal to false. Booleans can equal false and they can equal true. And you can do things like if this is true or if this is false, uh, then we will perform something. So if I want to debug dot log, if I want to debug my string, what's going to happen is it's still going to say hello world uh, because well, we're debugging that string. And if I want to debug that string and I also want to debug my int, what's going to happen is it's going to say hello world 25. Now the reason there's no space between that is because it, it just pastes it uh, right over. So if we put a space here, it'll proper it'll probably uh, properly place it. We can also do like this. We can add quotes, so we can add our own like sort of space, and that'll just do that. So that's how you debug things like. Uh, like data types, uh, we can also debug booleans. So if I debug the my bool, it says false. Uh, I'll remove this. We can debug anything. Uh, I'll do my double. It still works. So that's uh, debugging and data types. And now we're going to go on to uh, probably functions. So I'll make a function here and I'll just call it, let's see, int uh, add numbers and then return. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do two numbers here. Uh, we're gonna do num int number one or number A is equal to two, and int number B is equal to three. Int number, the reason we're getting an error is because, well, uh, instead of writing void, the void returns nothing. So we don't have to type in return and something. So like to return something, int, uh, this means it will return an integer. And we have the open parameters over here and the brackets. So if I do, uh, return number A plus number B. That's gonna work just fine. Okay, so we can do debug dot log add numbers parameters, and there we go. 
That might look a little weird, um, and I'll explain why we still have those parameters. But if we hit play, we'll get 5, because 2 plus 3 is 5. Um, before we do any more uh, functions, I want to show you one more thing with the uh, data types. If we make number A public, and if we go into the inspector, we'll see it right here, and we can change it. And by default, if you don't put public or private, it'll be private. So if I put nothing for this one and private for this one, we're not going to see any of them. They're both private. And it's the same thing for methods and functions. So if I make this private and private, it's, it's basically the same exact thing. If we make uh, void start public, um, then we can, from another class, access that uh, function or method. Okay, I just wanted to show you that because that's very important in programming, especially in Unity. All right, so we're gonna do a couple more things. Uh, we're gonna do methods now, like uh, making our own. So I'm gonna remove uh, this. Actually, no, I'm not. We're gonna probably have to do parameters and stuff. So I'll just keep that there for now. So I'll do void, add my numbers, add my num, yeah, add my numbers. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'll just remove this bucket. Uh, so we have number, let's see, number A plus number B. It's, it's not gonna do anything. We're gonna make int answer is equal to a plus b that's very simple uh, so and then we can do debug.log answer so I'll just remove this and then I'll call the method so add my numbers semicolon this is how we call methods we call them by uh, what their name is putting their parameters and semicolon uh, so this will still give us five as you can see if I make these public whoops uh, let's see 2 and 3 still makes 5 and if I make this five, 25 and 1 it should give us 26 yeah there we go so it won't change it here so if we were to remove the script and put it back it would basically reset it so this is its uh, default state you can also programmatically change it so if I made a public boolean my bool is equal to false and on start I made my bool is equal to equal to true it will uh, see how it's false right now uh, and if I hit play it'll become true and we can still change it we can still change things in the uh, while the game is running okay so now we're going to go over uh, parameters and we'll finish the video like that. So I'm going to comment this out. If you double quote, you comment things out. So it's basically disabled. You can also add notes like that. So uh, runs at first frame. OK, so in here we have parameters and you could space out as much as you want, by the way. Uh, in here we have our parameters and I'm going to put two integers here, so int first number, int second number. Now what this is, is this intakes uh, two data types. And we can just leave it like this, but now if we try to debug this, or if we try to call this method, it would give us errors, because we're not putting anything in here. That is a mandatory thing. We have to put parameters in here now, because it requires it. This is a requirement. So uh, instead of doing this, we can do first number, and second number. So our answer is this plus this. So we can take your number A, number B, two and three. That This will still work and give us five. Uh, we can also just give it, uh, we can hard code just two numbers, which I don't like to do. I, I like to uh, put everything in variables. It's just cleaner and a lot more convenient in the in the long run so number a i'll just put it back number b 
Uh, okay, so that's about it for episode one. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, just rewatch the video maybe if you have to to understand everything. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good one.